I don't know these things. Oh man. <sighs> Greetings, wayward travelers. Come on in, take a seat, and welcome to the Ecrium Expeditions. I am your dungeon master, Logan Hanley, here to spin you a yarn as well. Wait, oh fuck. Damn it! <laughs> you got me going through the lands of Ecrium. Shit. Damn it. Bree, I blame you. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> before we get started, um, want to do a few shout outs, a few sponsors, and then a, as well as a couple changes that are just going to happen um, in terms of um, donations and things like that, um, given the shit that has happened recently in the Twitch world. Because, uh, yeah, fuck them. Um, but yeah, first off, we're going to do some shout outs. If my stuff will work. But first and foremost, one of those will work. That's not right. Yeah, it is. Awesome. Uh, huge shout out to... Oh, the links aren't working. That's weird. Okay. Uh, first, Brianna Flame. Uh, she made all the overlays. She helped put together all this stuff that makes the stream possible from a overlay and like creative design standpoint. Um, huge, huge, awesome, amazing help in person. Um, so if you want any overlays done, if you want any photography done, she's taught me everything I know about D&D photography, um, as well as um, any sort of graphic design, Brianna Flame is your gal. Uh, next, Esoteric. Uh, he is the cartographer that, for the maps that you see behind you. Um, all of us ha are now using the entire world map of Ekrim as the background, but Esoteric was the one who did that. Eventually, I'll get the, the, the links fixed and stuff for... for our first full group session but yeah he did all of the maps was amazing to work with so if you need maps done check out his stuff reach out to him um yeah really cool guy uh next is del uh who is the artist for the amazing art that you see to my right and the players left um other other way renee um but uh del again amazing to work with the art absolutely stunning um, couldn't be happier with it. And uh, if you ever need character art for any of your D&D campaigns, reach out to Dell. And last but not, or last but not least, Adrian von Zeigler, uh, who is the composer of all the music that you'll hear on stream. Um, and yeah, go check out his works. Um, does an awesome job, has tons of music that is D&D related or can be used in any fantasy kind of realm. Um, next, we're gonna talk about some sponsors. Wow, the links. Wow, none of the link. I need to check that out because none of my links are working. Uh, Twitch heard me say "fuck you" at the beginning of the stream. Decided to cut me off. Um, but now, first, Dragon Rock RPG, the amazing, amazing Renee Beauregard and Daniel Lieberman. Sorry, Daniel, I had to say Renee first because he's here. Uh, bring in a very unique and creative spin to TTRPG content and. Uh, yeah, content creation. They do subclasses, they do races, they do backgrounds, they do monsters, they do not do classes, so don't ask them to. Um, we, but... we, Daniel and I have actually discussed this, okay? And, and, and we're tired of you, you know, slipping over yourself. <laughs> the, the, the fact is, ladies and gentlemen, the real fact I'm going to let him do that. The, yeah, he can do the talking. Is that we will do classes for you. It's just going to cost more and take twice as long. There you go. Um, that's it. Like, we'll do it, but it's just a pretty pet. That's all it is. There you, there you go. Straight from the horse's mouth. Uh, but yeah, they're amazing and awesome to work with. Um, you can see them, well, see Renee here. You can see Daniel when him and I do some of the homebrew stuff for the world of Ecrium. Um, and check them out on the socials for all of the different creativities that they do. Uh, next, Umbral Oculus Dice. Taryn Hackett, the amazing and wonderful Eden of the Briar, purveyor of hand-poured and polished artisanal dice. That's probably not the right way. But Umbral Oculus, conjuring relics from beyond the veil for players like you and me to enjoy at our tables. And then last but not least, the Initiative Order. Tio is a collective of passionate TTRPG players and creators that want to help the community thrive and grow. Their main goal is to explore and experience all kinds of gaming systems while creating an inclusive community for all of 
the players there and all of the viewers there as well. Um, so if you're looking for community games, if you are looking for a community that uh, loves uh, inclusion and diversity and wants to see the TTRPG community grow, check out the Initiative Order. Uh, their link isn't there, but just type it in somewhere and you'll find it. Twitter and Instagrams and Twitch as well. Um, yeah, and then last but not least, let's see if this one works. All right, whatever. I'm not going to bother with that one because I forgot what the chat command for that one was. Today has been a weird day, guys. Um, but no, so the last but not least, um, if you want to support the stream, down in our About section, there is a panel that says Buy Around. Uh, you can click that, and that will take us or take you to our Streamlabs page, which we'll be using for all donations as well as uh, any subscriptions uh, because now Streamlabs is offering monthly subscriptions similar to Twitch. However, unlike Twitch, thank you, Renee. Oh, was, I still had it under Ko-Fi. Thank, thank somebody. I don't know. Whoever, I don't know how that worked. Anyway. I just copied the link, put it in the chat. That's there fine. you go. Um, this is why I have you. Um, but no. Um, yeah, instead of Twitch taking the normal 50% for normal subs, Streamlabs gives 100% of whatever you donate to the creators. Uh, part of my decision to kind of switch that forward, especially with Ecrium Expeditions, is if you sub during Ecrium Expeditions, that money will also go towards um, the creators that you see here playing. Uh, so any subs, whether they're monthly or just like a one-time thing or any donation, one-time donations on stream will go straight to all of the creators. We'll split it, or everybody splits it evenly for their own projects or cosplays for their characters or whatever um just kind of my way and our way of giving back or me giving back to you guys for your time and and being awesome and uh all that good stuff shit i don't know let's play D, &D. fuck this i'm done with the nonsense <laughs> um yeah yeah fuck man oh wait you guys introduce yourself shit i forgot this is a stream um but yeah renee and renee and, and brie please very quickly Give your stick. Oh, hi, guys. Uh, oh, wait, I, I'm going straight into character. Uh, I am <laughs> Utahime. Uh, you can find me at Utahime Cosplay on uh, Facebook, Instagram, here on Twitch, and uh, Brianna DeCoster on Twitter. Uh, I am a cosplayer and streamer and TTRPG performer because I'm obsessed with all things Dungeons and Dragons and TTRPG at this point. So, uh, yeah, you can see what I'm up to on all the socials because I'm doing a lot. It's especially with this awesome group that I'm going to be getting to game with um, on Tuesday night. So uh, thank you guys for being here. Hello, everyone. My name is Renee Beauregard. I'm one half of Dragon Rock RPG Design, as you've heard recently. Um, you can find me at a uh, Dragon Rock RPG Design on... Ooh, I'm giving too many things away. Um, you can find me at Dragon Rock RPG Design on Instagram and at Dragon Rock RPG on Twitter, uh, where my friend Daniel Lieberman and I will put up all of our fantastic creations and want to work with you to be collaborators in your home games and streams, whatever you have. Um, otherwise, uh, I am a, an artist, a multi hyphenate, as we like to call ourselves. I'm an actor, writer, director, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I'm so excited to begin uh, this very first adventure uh, with my little sister. Uh, so looking forward to this. This has been so very exciting to put all this together. Um, and I'm so excited for you guys to be here. So thank you all so much and uh, enjoy. All right. Also, figured out what was wrong. I put, I put my, I modded myself. I put no hyperlinks in my in general <laughs> Twitch settings. So I fucked myself over. Thank, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I just know. I was just thinking about that because I, I checked Streamlabs and it wasn't there while you guys were chatting. No. Okay. Anyway, <sighs> we begin. Our adventure begins far to the south and east of Ekrim, to the lands of sand and tide, the Isles of Lilithal. Once considered the jewels of Ekrim itself, the Isles have diminished in status and power since the rise of the Zentherum Empire, an empire of chaos and greed, seeking to co conquer all of the Isles. However, our adventure does not focus on this conflict. Instead, we zoom in on one of the cities still mostly unaffected by the war at large. The Oasis, 
a sprawling city in the dunes where travelers from across Ecrium come to ra re rest, relax, and to escape from the world. A plethora of resorts competing with one another, but also working together to ensure the comfort of all their patrons. Today, we find ourselves following a young girl, entering through the Sindarin doors of Valar's Hope Spring Resort. She skips delightly, delightfully barefoot across the atrium and into the dining hall, grabbing a handful of strudels before continuing up the stairs to a small reading nook on the second floor, overlooking the lake in which the oasis surrounds. Finara, would you please introduce your character to us? Uh, yes, so uh, what you would see is uh, Fenara is a uh, half sea elf, half halfling, guys. Get that combo. Uh, she's five foot three. Uh, she's 18. She likes to say 18 and a half to make herself seem like she's a little bit older and more mature. Uh, she has uh, light tan skin um, like her mother. Um, she is really beautiful um wavy ombre blue hair that um, she got from her father's um uh, sea elf side of the family uh, she has green eyes she has um, a slender muscular frame um and uh, usually she's wearing um flowy dresses um she's currently wearing a really beautiful um blue um dress that um flows and um but just um, high enough where you could see her webbed feet, because she does have slightly webbed feet, guys. Um, but the dress itself is also ombre, so it's almost like the transition of her hair kind of flows into the dress. Um, she has um, a really beautiful um, uh, uh, necklace um, that has a, a really beautiful um, opulent um, jewel. It's like a pearlescent jewel attached to um, the string and then she's wearing a um, very uh, pretty uh, aquamarine bracelet that was given to her by her father and um, she's currently um, kind of uh, sitting and swinging her feet kind of like a little kid while she's writing in her diary as you're sitting there writing in your diary your shrudels next to you. Uh, today's flavor. Go ahead and give me a nature. I'm gonna make you roll a nature check to see if you can deduce the flavor of the strudel. All right, cause I just bit down into the strudel. Um, oh, and I'm gonna roll your. I'm gonna roll your guys's communal dice for today, cause I haven't done that yet. Uh, that was a d20, correct? A d20. Yes, yeah, so it'll be a. Uh, I that, rolled an eight. A nature check. Oh, whoa, ooh, an eight. An eight. Um, your daily mission between you and your brother, your daily mission to determine um, the flavors and exact recipe of your, your mother's strudels evades you yet again as her baking genius is just... There's, there's just something. It's a little... Is that salmon? No. Oh, man. Oh, I know parents gonna figure it out before me. He can't beat me again. Gosh dang it. Finara, come down here, please. Uh, all right. As you hear your mother calling you from below. I'll be right there, Mama. And uh, she closes her diary and um, where she was kind of trying to figure out the ingredients and she goes down to uh, meet her mom. As you go down, or as you go down the steps leading to the atrium and like the little area near the dining hall, you see your mother smock covered, um, little bit of that like flowery like poof in the air around her as she's coming out and wi wiping her hands um a halfling woman with uh dark brown hair i think i recall i'm looking at renee for for, for copper, remembrance copper yeah hair. copper hair <laughs> um looks at you uh honey uh as I try to imitate an Irish accent yeah. until wait, while, I'm, while I'm waiting, while I'm waiting for, uh, while <laughs> Fanar waiting for instantly next, no. runs up to her because she she's very affectionate and um, basically bends down because technically, even though Fanara is five three, she's still taller than her mom, so she bends down and gives her a big kiss on the cheek. 
She... Big mama bear hug. Oh, dearie. Ah. Uh, can... You look there. like you got into a mess there, mama. Uh, oh, y- you know, uh, just another, another one of our... Uh, uh, friends down the street trying to come in and get their hands on one of the shrugles. Well, I mean, your shrugles are the best around. I, I'm still trying to figure out your ingredients. One of these days, you have to give me the recipe. I mean, I'm, I'm not the best, um, as you know, compared to parent when it comes to, like, learning how to cook properly, because I almost burned down the kitchen that one time. But, um, you know, I'm, I, I feel like I'm slowly but surely getting better. She it does one of these... And- you, you, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Just come a little closer. Okay. And she whaps you real quick with the spoon. Don't you ever try to get my recipe until I'm on my deathbed. You know the rules. Why? I, I just don't understand. I mean, we are family, so it's okay for you to pass down the family recipe to family. It, it, Especially your in, children. In all, all in due time. Oh, gosh. You know that... You, know what Aunt Marlara, you know that she's trying to, you know, compete with you when it comes to recipes. So, I mean, you gotta teach us how to make it better, so then that way, you know, we can uphold our family's honor. Your, your aunt will not get within a stone's throw of the recipe. She's too drunk all the time. It's all that wine from, from, uh, breath rip that she's drinking. Yeah, I remember you told me that technically when you drink so much wine, it affects your taste buds and then things start tasting all funny. Yeah. What, why do you think she burns everything? But then why do I burn stuff? I don't drink wine. Oh, sweetie. It's 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 because... You, you know, I, I called you down here for... We're, we'll talk about cooking later. Uh, maybe around dinner time I'll help you out. Um, can you go wake your brother? He was supposed to be playing already. Oh, Mr. Sleepyhead, all the time sleeping during the day. All right, okay, I'll go get him. And then uh, Fenar, uh, like, basically kind of skips off mm-hmm. to go and try to find where Perrin would normally be. So you run up to the second story, uh, the second story again, uh, where the majority of your family stays. Most of the resort, uh, the, the better rooms of the resort are on the third, fourth, and fifth floors of the Hope Spring Resort. Um, so you run down the hall. His is, his room's right across from yours. Uh, Perrin, do you have anything, like, is there anything on your door, like, that would identify it as yours? Uh... I think there's, um, I think there's, uh, for, for lack of anything else, uh, because he's not exactly, he's not exactly a craftsman when it comes to like making things. So there's definitely, um, not to, you know, uh, boast or anything, but there is a starfish right in the middle of the door. Okay. Um, uh, that has been like a dried starfish, uh, that is like, peachy pink in color uh, that he hung himself so it's kind of off kilter uh, but yeah no he likes to think of himself in a high manner okay. um, and you would know that typical family rule at least for you and Perrin um, is is that like during the day like most of the time your doors are unlocked so your parents can come in and kind of do whatever like wake you up get you ready for the day um just like this. Uh, basically, Fenara is going to try to slowly, without making noise, open the door. And she's trying to sneak in. Okay. Because she wants to basically scare a parent or attempt to scare him. Okay. And wake him. Go ahead and give me a stealth check, please. Perrin, what's your passive oh, perception? Oh, this is perfect. It's a nat one, so that's but, Well, I, it doesn't it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, so, my so for Nara, basically, <laughs> probably, like, whatever is, like, if it's a dresser or something, she's probably going to trip over it, because that's, she's sometimes very clumsy, so, yeah. So, you open the door, and immediately, like, it gets stuck on a pile of clothes as you're oh. pushing in, and you trip over the pile of clothes and bump into... Oh 
the dresser that's next there, and there's like a like a probably some sort of vase with like water or like a pitcher of water on there, and it like teeters for a second before falling and <laughs> crashing on the ground. Oh no 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 no! Oh, Mama's gonna kill me! Oh. Uh, and then uh, Fenar is going to uh, bend down and kind of not even thinking she's kind of tr- putting her hands over it in a way to kind of see if her abilities would work in this situation you kind of gather up all the pieces in your like kind of in your together in your handish and you try to th- like channel a little bit of what you use at the lagoon um, into this uh, pitcher. It doesn't seem to work quite yet. It doesn't... It seems like there's a difference between physical matter, like, like, non-human matter, I guess, would be the best way to, to word it. Darn it. And, uh, Fenara's going to, um, after that kind of failed, she's going to just still try to collect the pieces, um, to try to fix later. She's going to actually take some of Perrin's clothes to wipe up the water that fell all on the floor. All right. So you take some of In a panic. So she's just making all of this noise. You just hear her mumbling and, like, trying to pick up the pieces, and you hear the glass kind of clinking on the table. Oh, oh, all right, all right, all right. Okay, fine. I'm not actually asleep. Okay, and Perrin will like get up out of the bed and like grab uh, a pair of like pants and 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 you know start like dabbing the floor with her. You know, if you just like, you know, I don't really keep my room, right? Like, never in a million years have I ever kept this room like Mum wants me to. I just. It would it would I, behoove you to if you want to be surprising to remember that. Yeah, well, I mean, I just figure that maybe one of these days you might just pick up after yourself and sometimes wake up at a decent hour. But then again, I know that you sneak out occasionally to go would, to you know where. Would you stop so, that? I, I I if you keep if you keep talking like that, she's gonna hear you. Okay, well you I know where you were last night. <sighs> I I have I have specifically asked you multiple times not to follow me. Well, I mean, I, I'm always very curious, like why you always tend to go out at night, and I want to make sure you're okay. And and I don't know, I'm curious. I'm just curious. I'm sorry. He, he like lets go of the of the pants and like wraps his hands around her face. Listen, you have to remember. I am your older brother, and I'm going to be just fine doing anything without you. You don't need to watch my back all the time. I know that, but I mean, sometimes I, I, I don't know. I, sometimes I feel like maybe we're growing apart because, you know, we haven't been spending <laughs> as much time together like we used to. So I, I'm sorry. You- no, I, well, I, I just, I mean, I, I know think... I've been busy at the lagoon and I've been really working and reading on, um, different, uh, you know, therapy, um, and, and, um, different herbs and different things you can do to, to really relax people and help them when they have injuries and whatnot. But I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like we just, I just want us to spend some more time together. I think that maybe in my in my idea of trying to grow up, trying to be a man or whatever uh, it is that I've got going on up here, I think that I stopped trying to pull your pigtails anymore. I think that's why I'm not hanging around as much trying to bother you. Well, you and see, I don't wear pigtails anymore. No more, right? Yes, you don't wear the pigtails no more because you're a fine young lady. I'm 18 and, and a half now. So that's I'm right. practically you, a grown you're, woman. You're an adult. That's right. Mm. You are an absolute adult. And so, yeah. you know what? Fine. If if that's what you're looking for, then I I why don't we spend today together? 
Does that work for you? We, we can oh, spend. Oh, that'll be so why lovely. Don't, why don't Why don't we spend the whole day together, and then we can go out and travel the island after? You know, I mean, I have. He picks up his loot. I have I have a sit that I need to do for mum before I'm allowed to go anywhere or do anything. So I I have Would to do that first. Would you come with me to my favorite spot? Like before? <laughs> I mean, started. I know. I, I just don't. I mean, I, I, I don't want to be too boring because I know no, that I go to that spot no, a lot. That's and... absolutely not. That's fine. I will go with you. Okay. And then we can go wherever you want to go after. I just... You know, I, I kind of have to go for my daily swim. <sighs> yes. We'll get you in the water so you can feel more like yourself. I mean, it's also a really... I feel like it's a magical place because you get really creative and you, you think about things that you don't normally think of, you know, when you're 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 near the ocean and, and looking at the sky and I don't know. And there's stuff that I want to talk to you about. Finn, what's taking you so long? Yeah. Um, coming. Um, you know how Perrin is. <laughs> um, oh, that, throw, that throw something at him and tell him to wake up and get down here. His mom's already, oh. you know, mom wants him up. He's got work to do. All right, okay. I, I, See, Dad I got so up, nervous, I called Dad Mama. Oh, that's, that's fine. Don't, don't, don't worry, don't, that don't. was on me too. <laughs> that's, that's I'll fine. just go with it. It, it's it's <clears throat> fine. Don't worry. It, it's a mix up. I'm coming down, doing a set. Don't worry. And he just kind of like pats her on the shoulder. Um, you're you're doing just fine. And we'll we'll have a nice day together after I finish. Thank you. I really appreciate it. That's no problem. Okay. No 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 no. no. As okay, you, I'll leave you be. As the two of you begin to make your way back downstairs, um, you hit the top of the stairs, and it's a nice, like, pretty big grand entrance, can fit, you know, four or five abreast, um, and you start to make your way down, your hand on the handrail, um, and it goes from being normal wood, and then it starts to feel kind of sticky. Can she look down to try to see what what's going on? Yeah, as you look at your hand, it has this kind of like sticky brown substance on it. Does it smell like anything? It, it smells uh, quite like maple syrup. Uh, she's gonna look down to try to see if there's like any like other traces of it kind of on the wall there or like leading down the stairs or anything like something was spilled so there uh it doesn't look like a spill it looks like it was very like it's placed pretty much like three quarters of the way up the railing all the way to about a quarter of the way down like the last quarter of the railing um and then at the very bottom of the stairs you can see where there's a little bit of a lip you can see a bucket. Seems like a certain prank here. I'll be happy about this. So she's gonna kind of carefully, kind of like position herself away from where the bucket would kind of probably pour down to try mm -hmm. to like investigate further. Okay. Um, go ahead and give me an investigation check as you make your way down. It's very easy to avoid. The bucket's pretty small in relative likeness to this grand staircase. Um, but yeah. Uh, that's 18. 18. So you can see that a little bit coming from like the edge um, is a little bit of that same maple syrup substance kind of dripping down. And there's like a small puddle maybe about the size of like... Uh, like a golden dollar on the ground uh, where it's kind of just like very, very very long drip Does it look like it was like probably meant to like 
basically pour on top of someone's head. It, it looks as it looks like there. You can see a little bit of a rope coming or going along the edge and then down and into the dining hall. But yeah, you, you'd assume it was meant to come down on top of somebody's head. Very peculiar indeed. And um, she's also too like in the meantime, she's gonna try to look and see if there's anything because she's also too worried about Mama. <laughs> basically going off that there's a mess like in <laughs> anywhere in uh at the resort so she's trying to look for like if there's something while she's kind of still going down that she can grab to kind of try to clean up but like also to not set off the little uh the tr- little it looks like a trap um okay so yeah i'd say i mean um they're generally like the the maids carts so there's some like cleanup stuff like right at the end of the hall that you can run up and grab real quick and get the handrail nice and clean uh, making sure not to step in the area that you think would be the most opportune place to trigger the trap uh, get the whole handrail clean uh, it's hard to like you, you're not going to be able to get that little dot on the floor clean uh, yeah, no, without she's, getting she's underneath not trying to, yeah she's not trying to go underneath because she's she is fearful that it's going to ruin her dress so she's basically going to kind of like try to follow like go around so like she's kind of like even though she doesn't have to she's like tiptoeing like with her, with her bare feet around to try to go towards where, where uh, the it looks going. like the rope is going okay. and leading to parent while she your sister is doing this are, are you doing anything you yourself um no, and I should technically introduce my character. Yeah, what like what's, they, what, they, what they visually look like. Um, <laughs> uh, what he visually looks like, I should say. Uh, Perrin is a, uh, a three foot four halfling um, who has fair skin, uh, unlike his mother. Um, he has green eyes, which he shares with his sister. He has dark red auburn hair, which is like curly and tufted um, top of his head. Um, he wears a bright emerald um, vest that has golden um, Celtic knot style embroidery around it. Uh, he also does not wear shoes uh, because they they live on the beach. Like, who needs shoes? Um, so uh, he has very slight gaunt features, um, which is kind of different from most halflings who are a little bit more stout and round. Um, but, uh, parent is just, is just tuning right now. It's just like, and just making sure that everything is like where it needs to be. Right. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't me who said that. That's for sure. Um, but you know, and Nara might have a clue that she's trying to investigate. <laughs> um, but other than that, no, he's, he's just tuning the loot um, so that when he finally does go downstairs uh, for the set, that the, the instrument is going to go. Okay. As you turn the corner, Fenara, Fen, uh, you see eating and uh, a number of people there. I mean, it, the, the uh, Hope Spring has been relatively packed the past couple of days. Um, of note, some of the things you see is you see um, a dragonborn. Uh, this one a little bit different, as I introduce the first aquatic dragonborn that y'all will meet on your adventures. Um, a very dragon-like features for the head, but then where the torso is is covered in this very um, is covered in a shell. Uh, arms still scaled, legs a little bit stubbier than a normal dragonborn, um, fingers and hands both webbed and barefoot as well. Uh, you also see a pair of elves off to one side as well as a goliath in another, but tucked behind around the corner, following this rope, behind one of the small shrubs that overlooks the atrium, you can see none other than your Grandpa Al waiting patiently around the corner holding this string or this rope getting ready to tug at any moment when somebody gets within that spilling range okay so for is gonna try to try to in some way even if it's like she 
that table where it has all the like the, the dragonborn and the elves and stuff even if she has to kind of go around them and she you know to try to sneak around to uh flank her grandpa she wants to try to basically like you know be like what are you doing but is there a way to kind of do sneak around and and she's actually going mm -hmm. to go around that table if she if that means that she can be like kind of covered by that large dragonborn so you would know that they're Behind the stairs are one of the many servants' corridors um, that your family uses to get around the resort uh, in a little bit more, like, not stealthy, but in a way that they can just go around to okay. help people. So you know you can, can loop oh, okay. around, yeah, then and then, but you'd still come out on the other end, close enough to that dragonborn where you can use that dragonborn, uh, or that aquatic yeah. dragonborn, as cover. I'm totally going to do that. And then, like, I, you, <laughs> she basically looks up, pardon me. And then she's like, kind of like, just trying to still, you know, kind of squat it down, like to try to basically get closer to her grandpa. The dragonborn just looks at you for a second. You can see the plate is covered in strudels and give your mom my respects. These are yet again great strudels. And he considers Justin oh, nice. And then she's going to keep going um, when she is close enough to basically kind of get behind or like on the side of her grandpa. Uh, let me know if I don't know if I have to like, go ahead and give me give me a stealth. <laughs> give me a stealth check. But since you use the the servants corridors as well as the um, as well as the, the dragon, the aquatic dragonborn. Go ahead and roll me a stealth with advantage. Also, oh. yes, the aquatic dragonborn was a collaboration between Dragon Rock and myself. We did it a couple days ago on stream. It was a lot of fun. I also got a little bit Veruca Salt on the, the during it. <laughs> I got a 16. 16. You are able, you know that your Grandpa Al's weak spot is in his outer reaches of his vision he is getting up there in age and is starting his vision is starting to slightly go but you know you can sneak up behind him relatively easily and you do so do you have a death wish oh. <laughs> well what do we you you were supposed to come down the stairs i did come downstairs and i saw that you had a trap yeah. And I went around said trap because I figured, hmm, this has Grandpa Al written all over it. it and I was right. It, 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 you know, no, that mama's going to kill you, you know? It, it, and he, he straightens up. Here, here, um, take this for me real quick. Uh, okay. Hey, Aaron Trude. Aaron Trude. I, oh. I caught her. No, no, no. The, the, the culprit no, no, no. who's got the... The mo and molasses. Fanara is going to try to look for somewhere where she can try to tie it so it doesn't tip over, but she's like kind of freaking out. So I think that she's trying to like not have it tip all the way over. Make um, a, <laughs> make a strength check or a strength, oh an athletics, ch athletics check if you're proficient. If not, then uh, just I am, I am not. So this right. might be bad, but it's going to be great. Uh, this yep. is the part, this is the part where Perrin comes down the stairs. Are you, are, <laughs> That's a now, five. very important question, and please don't <laughs> fall on the sword if you don't want to, but are you going down in the direct way that you would end up oh underneath God. the uh, the bucket of molasses? Yeah, because I've seen Home Alone. That's how funny <laughs> oh it is made. That's how we do funny. All right. Uh, if, yeah, I got, I got a five. A five. So you, you go to, like, try to tighten it without realizing, wait, I probably he probably would have pulled this if he saw me and you look up and the bucket like teeters for a second before starting to fall plummet plummet you watch and you peek around as Perrin is just <laughs> looking at his loot strumming it I need Perrin I need you to make a dexterity saving throw with can, can Fanara at least yell out throw. something to try to help him uh sure it's not going to be what you think. Yeah. Like, protect the loot. Uh, I guess in that moment, he like looks up at her and it's just like, 
what are you on about? And it's just kind of like <laughs> in, in this kind of like awestruck moment. Uh, so dexterity saving? Throw, yes, say? please. You gotta at least give you some chance of dodging, even if it's not very high. Uh, all right. Well, I have a decent dexterity saving throw. That's good. Uh, we'll see. Well, um, I, uh, I'd like a, I'd like a D4, please. Do you want, do you want the left one or the right one? I would like the left one, please. The left one is a two. Okay. So that's, that's a total of 11. 11. You look at the last minute. You're like, I I don't, I don't know what you're talking. And you look up as it's like halfway already starting to fall. The nice thing about molasses is that even though it's like, it's, 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 syrup like and it, it has gravity and 9.8 meters per second whatever right it's still for the comedic effect of this it's going like cartoonishly slow, slow down toward you and you manage to dive out of the way you toss the loot and it kind of just scrapes across the floor and you just like attempt to dive out and you fall and it lands right like where like the be- the where your toes would be and so like your feet and your toes are covered in molasses. But everything else of you and your loot are perfectly safe. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was trying to tie it. It was Grandpa. Grandpa, always with his pranks. And then he tried to blame me, and now Mama's going to think that I was the one who did all that. And as stoically as possible, the parent looks at her and says, Well, you have quite the strange way of showing how jealous you are. about oh it's it's clear don't you know that i happen to be the star of the show and you're just jealous so you have to cover me in syrup in order for me to not play to my perfectionist Uh, ways um excuse me uh i actually told you to protect your loot and that's because i know that you give your right arm to someone to make sure that there was nothing that would happen to that said loot. So excuse me for trying to help you out there and warn you. Puts his hand up. I I have a lot to learn about using sarcasm with you and and teaching you what sarcasm sounds like. And he just like he he leans over and goes that's what we call a joke. I was kidding. That's a dirty joke. Don't do that. And then she's no. gonna she's gonna slap him on on the shoulder, um, kind of hard because she's upset because she thought that he was serious and that like hurt her feelings. And then she's kind of like folding her arms and kind of turns away a little bit. That that stings a little bit. Have you been working out? I mean, I'm just doing my normal swimming. You know what? I'm not talking to you. You, that was a dirt, that was, that was not nice. I thought you were serious. Also, if you'd like to hear a dirty joke, I'll make time for it. And he just kind of like turns away and heads towards the stage. Fanar is going to go back to where the grandpa is to like also make sure that he's technically okay because she knows that he's up there in age. You turn around to go and like kind of confront Grandpa Al again. He's gone. Just like that. I will never understand how he moves so quickly for someone of his age. But yeah, he can't see you or nothing. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> and then she's looking around to try to see if there's like some type of uh, to clean up. Like if there's any like mop or anything mm-hmm. along those lines to try to basically fix what happened. Yeah. There's no evidence. You can very easily run back to the top of the stairs. And when you do, you see your father uh, bucket in one hand, mop in the other, starting to make his way down uh, towards you all. A fair sea elf man. And uh, Fenar is going at full speed, and she's kind of looking down because she's like kind of panicking. So she like probably runs into him. <laughs> no lie. Any? Oh, uh, sorry. 
her, Daddy? Gran Grandpa Al again? Yeah, I mean, you would think that he would stop with his pranks by now, because he's, I mean, he's, he's getting older, so, I mean, he needs to be careful. You, you know, when, when you're, when you get to be that age, um, you, you start having more fun with life, or at least that's what Grandpa L uh, would, would tell me. Um, well, usually I don't have an issue with all his pranks, but then when it has to do with something my mama is going to get upset because things are right, that's when I worry because, well, he tried to play with all me, and you know that I get in trouble. You know how mama is. I, I know how your uh, your mama can be. Uh, there's uh, you, well, there's a there's a reason you're around. Um, here, you you clean up. I'll go talk to mama. Make sure everything's all right. I know she probably. Let her know it was grandpa. Uh, me. I will. She l okay. listen. She would have known it was Grandpa Al without you telling her. She's she's got a way. You're right. She's really perceptive. She she's really good at figuring things out. So. Mm -hmm. Well, you do that. Uh, I'll talk to your mama, and then after that, um, why don't you and I and maybe Heron uh, go down to the beach for a bit? Oh, we, we were planning on going in that direction anyway, so that's perfect. I like that. We haven't done that in a while. Uh, and you take the mop and bucket. He hands them off to you. He continues down, avoiding the uh, avoiding the molasses. Goes into the kitchen. You can hear. Aaron Trude, your mother, yelling, He did what? <laughs> and the only time she breaks to do any sort of an accent that's similar to Finn is when she's angry. Uh, <laughs> she, turns, she turns from Irish to Southern real quick. Uh, and Finn, uh, so Finn, you, you take that mop it up. Perrin, you go to the stage quite a few people around not super um i mean it's not packed by any means but it's a decent crowd uh as you step up eyes kind of turn to you um, you know some of the regulars uh, burl who is the aquatic dragonborn um and then tylo and moss which are the the half elf pair as well as sortu who is the goliath and sitting front row Glass of wine already in her hand. Your aunt, Marlara. And she just toasts you. It's already like just starts drinking. You could tell she's it's five o'clock somewhere. Oh, I everyone, thank you so very much for coming out uh, this morning. Uh, welcome to the Valar Hope Spring Resort. It is my pleasure to grace you with a song for your breakfast and make sure that you give my mother the thanks that she deserves for the beautiful pastries that she has made for you today. Don't try and guess what's in them. They're just freaking delicious. With that in mind, I'd like you all to sit back, relax, enjoy the breeze and a little song. me let's get rich and buy our parents homes on the isle of vish let's get rich and give everybody big scooters and teach them how to fish let's get rich and build a house on ishtani where you can fill it with everything you wish way out there you and i
I realize I muted myself. You did. Yes, I did. I <laughs> muted myself. Um, everybody starts clapping a round of applause for you. Meanwhile, in the front, your Aunt Marlara, half half her wine in. Yeah, you know, you probably could have tuned it a little better. But, you know, you know, it's always practice makes perfect, dear. And she just keep, keeps sipping her, her wine. He nods. Everyone, I'd like you to remember that it is definitely 8 o'clock. If my aunt is here with two glasses in front of her empty, it's definitely 8 o'clock. Thank you all for coming out. I'll it's, see you later. It's actually 3. D d dip and run. Dang it, I just read D'Angelo's comment. Uh, <laughs> I'm tired. No, but you dip and run uh, around the same time. Uh, Finara, you finish mopping. And uh, you guys are free to kind of do as you please with the day. Um, not much chores to be had. Really only just the little brief um, morning song for the guests. Um, and you all get to level two, Ooh. tier two for that. So you get actually, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you two tiers for that, because that was a lot of role play and that was a good time. So you get not only your survivor, but you all are your skillful, but you also get your survivor. So you get your proficiencies in your skills. You get proficiencies in your weapons. You also get any cantrips that your class may get, uh, and then you also get proficiency with your saving throws as well and armor which you aren't wearing so that doesn't matter right that's fair <laughs> yep all right was that a hint do we need armor right now oh no you <laughs> yeah, can't like, no uh, listen you live on you live on a resort uh, you live on a resort okay. you ain't getting right. no armor all right whatever you say <laughs> You're going to the beach. You're going to the. You're about to go to the beach, cleric. Just run it into the water, <laughs> fully suited and armor. As the famous chanteuse Ms. Minaj once say, "Let's go to the beach, beach." <laughs> well, Finara's going to before doing that. She's going to um, after cleaning up and putting away the supplies where they belong um, over in the servants' area. She's going to go upstairs to. Um, to her room to try to grab her bag and um and her like you know put her little um like diary that she keeps and and um you know other little trinkets in there mm -hmm. uh, to get ready to go and head off with her brother and her dad yeah you get your your kind of day bag your, your small little like want to be adventurers pack and throw it on and head out with uh with Perrin. And as you guys are getting ready to go out, you see your dad walk out. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll meet you, the two of you out there. Uh, I got to finish talking to your mom about some stuff. Um, Baron? He just kind of gives you a nod. You do this every time, Dad. You like you, you give me this like look as if I'm supposed to understand ex like exactly what you're saying. But like hmm. Alright. Mm. Alright, cool. Awesome. Right, let's go to the beach here. <laughs> Fan don't give your brother too hard of a time. Well, I can't make any promises. And then she's gonna like elbow elbow parent like but, but she has to because he's not level. She has to go down. You have to, so you have to talk. You're not elbowing him straight in the face. Yeah, because yeah, the dad, the, our dad is 6'3", and then she's 5'3", and then Perrin is, what is three, three, three foot four. four. Three, four, yeah. So it's just, it's, yeah. Um, as you're walking out, you hear your dad chuckle and just under his breath, uh, uh, she's, her, she's her mother's daughter. And just walks back into the kitchen where uh, you can start to hear the two of them starting to converse. Not sure about what, but you're out, out the front door. The world is your oyster. And you start heading to the beach. It doesn't take you very long to get there. Is there a particular spot in which you, the two of you would like to go? Yes. Uh, so 
Fanara loves, there's a certain area, it's kind of like um, where the rocks kind of build up, but there's like almost like a little cliff, but it's not too high. So it's like one of those um, cliffs where it's just like slightly above where you can safely, if someone wanted to dive down into the water, it's not like you're going to have to fear that mm -hmm. your life is ending when you do so. Um, but it's also too nice because it's um, it has like some um, really pretty flowers along the edge of the cliff and um, some little bushes and things. And usually um, when Perrin and Fanara were younger, they would kind of play up there and um, kind of sit and like dangle their feet off the side of the cliff. Um, when Finn would often like jump off and you know, they would do like different like dive bombs in and stuff like that. But um, she's gonna head back up to that same normal spot and um, like kind of sit down and um, just kind of swing her legs off the side of it like she normally does, waiting for a parent. Aaron is not far behind her by any means. Um, he watches her get all set and um, throws the loot over his back uh, with the strap that he has. Um, and as she sits down and starts like, her feet start to kick as uh, she is wont to do. He walks up behind her and then puts uh, both hands on her shoulders, just looking out at the water. Well, what are you waiting for? Oh, well, I mean, before my swim, um, you know, I, I wanted to just talk about Okay. All right. Uh, and he like puts uh, puts himself on her right side, um, and and like does that like lean back with your arm sort of position, um, and like has his feet crossed. And it's like looking up at her. And what's, she what's she kind of on? awkwardly like sees that he's like doing that and. She, she has this habit of like kind of almost imitating him sometimes when he does certain things because she thinks that it's cool. So she's trying to like seem like relaxed because she's she's nervous about discussion that she's gonna have with him. So she tries to reach out her arms, but then probably like accidentally like pushes his arm like, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, no, oh, it's fine. Um, and he just like, he sits up and it, it, if it, it'd be easier for you if I, if I do this, uh, but we could just sit right oh no i was just trying to um, get comfy like how how you were um well um so there's something that's been on my mind it, i mean it has been for a little bit but it's just been kind of growing if that makes sense i mean you are a woman now finora that's bound to happen talking about you perv and then she's gonna like <laughs> slap him on the shoulder again stop with none of that dirty stuff that I've, I've heard you discussing with some of your friends no it's not that <laughs> it's not those kind of thoughts right thank you very much um right. no it's it's i've been having dreams and not those types of dreams but uh, i i've been picturing a woman and she has this beautiful dark skin and long, like uh, light brown hair. And she's dressed real nice in like this beautiful, beautiful golden dress. And she's by the water and it's almost like she's waiting for me. And every time I kind of get a little closer to, to see her face, I can't quite make it out, but she extends her arm out to me. And it's, it's so strange, but I've had that dream repeatedly. And it's not just that I've, I don't know. I mean, you know how I'm always going to the library and I'm always picking up books on, on different cultures and different lands and things. And I don't know. I think that I've just been very curious, you know, like what it's like out there. You know, Daddy used to travel a lot, and he told me some stories. 
of his days when he was a merchant. It sounded real nice, and the places sounded wonderful, and the people sound real interesting. And I see a lot of the people who come into town and come into the resort, and I get to talking with them, and, you know, I pick up on things here and there. But it's just kind of like an itch that you can't scratch. But it's, it's so silly of me to want to go away, you know? I, I, I feel like I feel kind of guilty because everything that I could ever want is right here with you and Mama and Daddy and, and Grandpa Al and Grandma Mariel and, I mean, even though, ugh, Uncle Eldrin. Ugh, don't get me started on him. Ugh, well, I can he, do without him. He I makes wish him... he went back to the dollar, if, to be if, honest. If I have dirty jokes, that man makes rancid jokes, okay? Well, there it's is just always nothing... inappropriate. It's always at the wrong time, and then Mama gets all flustered, and then him and Daddy end up having to have a serious conversation about his not being respectful. It's a whole thing. It's just... Uh... I, I mean, I... Merlara, is, she's not too bad when she doesn't have so many drinks in her system. She can be all right sometimes. I, I don't appreciate her commenting on my music, seeing as she has no fucking talent. I have more Well, talent. that's really rude, because she couldn't even try to play a lick of that loot, even if she was drinking four of those things she normally drinks. She couldn't even do it. Not one chord. So okay. I don't understand why she's always picking on you and trying to act like she can do better. I and really she don't thinks, And she thinks that she can bake. That's a laugh. That's a right laugh. I can't yeah. even, you know, you kind of, you inspired me. And I don't, like, I don't say this often, Finara, but that was. But what, what did I do so that was so inspiring? And he just keeps, like, strumming. No, no, it's just the way that you, like, talked about it. Like, it just brings, like, the ideas, just, you know, like, hold on, like, let me. I've been staring at the edge of the water long as I can remember, never really knowing why. Well, I don't really know why. I wish I could be the perfect daughter, but I come back to the water no matter how hard I try. I mean, the water's really nice right now. It's warm. I take every trail I track, every path I make, every road leads back to the place I know where I cannot go. What is wrong with me? Sound a bit familiar? Well, now that you sing it so beautifully, yeah. You have, I mean, you've got stories. You don't even have to. You don't even have to write them. It's just you've got to tell me how you feel, and I'll I'll turn them into songs, and it's gonna be easy. Well, all the things that I talk about are nonsense. Like, I mean, this whole thing about me wanted to go out and adventure. I, I, it's so stupid. I mean, I'm not a person who fights any battles or, or, um, you know, like I don't have any business type sense. I mean, other than like, you know, I like to try to help around the resort and and such but it's just I don't know it's like uh, just this this yearning and yeah like like your song I I keep coming back here and looking out and I really start to thinking when I go on my swim you know and I don't know I'm sorry and at that, that as soon as she apologizes, because this is something that she she does all the time, she stumbles, stumbles over herself trying to make room for other people. Um, and Perrin just tiny left hand and like intertwines it in her right hand and just like holds her hand. It's not, it's not silly. It's not ridiculous. You're just you're having these feelings and you have to do something about them you're what are you what are we waiting for what are you waiting for if if you're having visions maybe can i 
Can I look at that for a second? He points at her at her, at her wrist. Why is he dead again? Right. There's there's a, a there's a silhouette on that. Is it not? Hold on, let me take a look at it. And then he just like, um, he turns it around um, and it's just like focusing on it. Um, Mr. Hanley, uh, which is what your students call you. It's okay. Don't worry. Uh, I'm not worried about the, about, the sound is not my, my concern. Um, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Chat, can you hear me now? Hello. All right, we have the right mic going. I didn't. I, yep. Uh, so, based on just like looking over the silhouette on the bracelet. Oh yes, that. Sorry, I thought you were talking. I, I'd, I'd like to, um, I'd like to make a religion check. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Just to kind of. Just to kind of see what I remember. Yeah, go for it. Uh, it's a twelve. A twelve. Um, what you'd remember about this person that she's describing? Um, yeah. It could be a few people. Um, with water in nature, it's very tenuous. Uh, but the description sounds to you more like Avandra than it would Melora. Those would be the two main, like the two main pullings. Um, Melora being the wild mother, uh, goddess of pretty much everything naturey, um, whereas Avandra is the change bringer, also known as uh, she who makes the path, who is the goddess of kind of just like wandering souls, travelers, adventurers, um, those who make their way around the world. Hmm. Finn, I just... I have to ask you. When you're seeing this lady, what else do you see? Well, um... I see the beautiful sky and, and the great big ocean and um, there's almost just like this golden light. And again, her dress was really, really beautiful. It was flowy and it looked golden too. She looked really familiar. And I just, I was like, I, I feel like I've known her before, but I couldn't get a good, uh, I, I, a good vision of her face. So that's why I was a little confused because in these, these past years of me having the same repeated dream, I still can't see her face for some reason. Hmm. Now this golden light is—is is, yeah. is it, it? Does it shine on the water? And now that you think, now I'm thinking about it, yeah, yeah, it does. In kind of a wiggly line. It seems like it's pointing outward. Kind of where uh -huh. the sky meets the ocean. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, and he just like looked. You could see like the there are things turning in his head over and over, um, and he just kind of like nods. Finn, I think. I think something greater is. I think something greater is trying to reach out to you. Um, like one of those epiphany things? Uh, no. Uh, Grandpa Al pretends that he has those. Um, those are different. Um, yeah, it's usually just him farting. That is, you're, you're not wrong. He makes um, that weird face and then <laughs> lets one out. It's really disgusting. You don't be there when it, you don't hear it. That's the worst one. Um, no, I think that I think something greater is trying to reach out, like something big. Uh, I don't. Do you Spiritual? remember, like some type of revelation? Yeah. Yes, right. Um, do you remember 
the the stories Dad used to tell us about Avondra, and and yes, I usually try to say a little bit of a prayer to her, you know, just in honor of Daddy and his. I mean, he always said that she looked out for him, you know, when he was out and about when he was traveling before he obviously met Mama. Hmm. Now I'm just. I'm just putting two and two together here, um, which sometimes makes five, but today I'm hoping it makes four. Um, I think I think your prayers are falling upon her ears. I think I think she's really I think she's really trying to show you something. And he just kind of like looks out at the water as he says that. Why she's trying to communicate with me. I've never really thought of it that way. I mean, I do believe in the divine and in miracles and such, but I, I, I don't know why I never really thought it would ever happen to me. I mean, I always felt blessed because I have all of you. It's everything that I could ever want. As long as we're together. And he just kind of like leans his head against her shoulder uh, he looks out at the water you see the way the sun hits the water the shine the way that it reaches the shore off the waves the way mm -hmm. that the surf touches the sand mm -hmm. that's what she wants for you Finn I think maybe, just maybe I think it's time we leave home but t together? you mean it? You, if you think for one second I'm going to tell you to go without me being right there by your side you've got another thing coming well, I you would flat out refuse. I couldn't. I mean, I really can't even face. think of leaving family. I mean, it's going to be so hard. We're going to leave mama and daddy with all the responsibility of the resort all by themselves. And because we know that Uncle Eldrin and Aunt Malara are not going to be that helpful around They're the not. resort. No, you're right. They're absolutely not. But they, they can manage. We have. They can hire someone to fill our positions. There are so many people on this island who are probably looking for opportunities. Have you but ever traveled out? I, I, I totally forgot. You haven't traveled either, have you? No. When and he like takes a big deep breath when he says this, uh, and lets out a deep kind of sigh as he just looks back out on the water. I was just a very young boy when we came here. When you were born, I was, was very young and small. Smaller than I am now. I know that's hard to believe, but... Um, you was probably cute as a button, too. <laughs> well, that's... Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, um, still are. Not, not saying that you aren't now, but he just I mean, more tussles. manly. He tussles his hair a little bit and he goes, well, I, I like to keep my girlish charm as it were. Um, he looks back on the water. The only time I remember any travel was after, after your dad, after dad came into my life. And it's your mum's life. And then we had you. And we needed to go somewhere else. Because you were coming. And where we were wasn't so great for... Newborns. But... That, that's... I don't remember much. I, all I remember is coming from... Coming from Ishtani. I'm coming down here to the oasis to live life. Everything else is a blur. But I've never seen anywhere else than the Isle of Ish. 
And he stands up and he dusts off his pants. And I think it's time. I think it's time we leave the island. I think, uh, I think it's something we can do together. And I'd really, I really think that if you, if you so desperately want to spend more time with me, why don't we just go out together? You can spend all the time with me that you want. You promise never to get tired of me? There are going to be pure defining moments where I am absolutely requiring my own private time. But Finara and, fair. and he like again just like wraps his hands around his face. I could never tire of you, my dear. Well, that's the correct answer, sir, because I would have had to give you a smack upside the noggin if you said otherwise. And I would never do that. Now go and get in the water. What are you waiting for? <sighs> I know. All right, all right, all right. <sighs> and uh, she gets ready um, to um, go um, on the side of the cliff, but just before she kind of has her feet kind of on the edge, but she turns and... She looks back. You know, I never really asked you this before. But do you miss him? He bites his tongue, like, really hard. I would be... I would be the worst liar, the worst kind of liar if I said no. You this think that about... he would want you to go too? <sighs> you have this really strange habit of unraveling me at the most inopportune moments. I don't know what he'd want, because I don't know him. I don't know if I ever will. But this isn't about me. This is about us. Hmm. Well, I just thought I'd ask, because since it's about us, then, you know, it's okay for us to check in with one another and make sure we're doing all right and and got our heads on straight and know what we want for the future. I want you to see what apparently your God wants you to see. Oh, you and your fancy words. And then she's going to then hop off and go into the ocean and dive into it. Oh, you are also you muted. muted. I just, I, oh my gosh, I, I didn't press the button. Damn it. Um, try not to get any static while you guys are having this emotional moment. Because uh, <laughs> my AC is on, because it's hot in here. But as you dive into uh, into the lake that which the oasis surrounds itself, and fully immerse into the water, we're going to take a quick break. Because we're like an hour and a half in already, and like oh, y'all, yeah, we're all, we've been playing for an like an hour, we've been playing like for like a solid hour. Um, time flies when you're time, having fun. Time flies, but yeah, we're gonna take a quick break. Uh, sit tight. We'll be back in about five minutes. And thank you all for following us on this adventure thus far. Thanks, guys. See you soon.
Welcome back. Our little half sea elf halfling. I'm gonna have to get a better way at putting that into I'm, one a more concise. <laughs> I'm like I, that's it's just a mouthful. A half a half sea elf half halfly sea elf. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'm the <laughs> halfless halfly sea elf. I don't know. Uh, a sea ceiling. A sea ceiling. I like that. A ceiling. A sea elf. A sea elfling. Okay, I like that too. Okay. I like that too. All right. You. By the way, oh, before we get y'all reached. Uh, what are you guys at? Three. You guys are at. I'll give you. I'll give you guys four. That was a really, Ooh, really okay. touching. That was a really touching moment. I'll give you four. Well, thank Yay, you. So you guys you. get your feet. Ooh, right. okay. Which I guess we didn't. We didn't really talk about what spells no. did you guys? What spells did you guys take as your cantrips? Um. So I took um, the ones that made the most sense for Fenara, which was Mandine, Sacred Flame, and Spare of the Dying. Ooh. Um. And I. I also took the things that made. This most most since the Perrin, um, right? And I took so I took friends, uh, prestidigitation, and uh, well, I I just because I'm a very specific halfling, um, because I'm a mark of hospitality halfling, I get prestidigitation. So I chose friends and vicious mockery. Very nice. <laughs> um, and then at level four, you get to choose a feat. This can be one that adds a plus one bonus to a ability score or just a straight feat. Which did the two of you choose? Um, well, I chose Observant because I feel like she's always yeah. mm -hmm. uh, very watchful of others, especially her brother. Um, and uh, the lip reading comes in handy <laughs> for various purposes. Uh, and I mean, who doesn't need extra passive perception investigation? Uh, and as it were, uh, being a bard, um, I've chosen the lucky feat. So not only are you a halfling where you can't ever roll natural one, <laughs> now if you roll a natural one twice, you don't have to. <laughs> right, that, that's unless, unless you roll, unless you somehow manage to roll a natural one three times in a row. No, I, I mean, yeah. That's the honest. true. Uh, but so, Finn, you dive into the water, dress and all, leaving your back or leaving your bag up on the cliff. Um, oh, I want to describe. So, the oh, cool yes, thing please about do. this dress is that there is a underpart to it where it's basically like a bodysuit, like a swimsuit. So then that way, it's not like her. Uh, her lady regions are out there for on display because you know she's a lady, decent lady. She's trying to be a lady yep. here, mm -hmm. so you know you can't be exposed. I don't know. Mama wouldn't have that. No. Um, and also too, when she does go into the water, um, the scales that kind of are on her—it's uh, basically—it almost looks like a birthmark because it kind of goes across the top part of her head and. Um, crown of her head and a little bit into her cheek area but her scales often shine a little bit brighter um that kind of teal blue color um similar to her daddy's uh uh skin color that um nice pale blue turquoise and um you know um there is and kind of in the back of her neck kind of like where there's almost like gills but it's hidden by her hair so then that way you can't really you see it, so she usually kind of keeps her hair long, so then people don't think that she's a little, I don't know, That, that, that she is. I mean, she is she, special, A right? little, <laughs> your daddy's little angel. <laughs> no. Um, but it only opens up a little bit when she's ever, she's in the water, so she breathes a little bit. Okay, longer. okay. Mm -hmm. I get you. I get you. I see you. So, as you dive into the water, Pretty crystal clear, but go ahead and give me a perception check for a moment. In in, in, uh, in Perrin, in Perrin, if you like, kind of standing at the top of this cliff, looking down. If you'd like to as well, you can. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna withhold you from seeing the things that that Finn can see. The water in the oasis is known for being like really clean, very clear. Crystal clear. Like you can see everything. The coral reefs underneath. Like it was, you know, like right in front of you, or looking through glass. I 
don't think I see it uh, with a seven, um, but I definitely am now it lost in thought uh, with that, with the concept of leaving this island, taking the road of the wake, allowing ourselves to be away from home. I'm also thinking of that lovely song that she inspired me to write, so I'm trying to finish the rest of the lyrics. All right, so as you are wandering in thought, Finara, you see darting in between the coral reefs the different colors, pinks and teals, and uh, like the like the weird, like, sherbet orange, like the, the orange color that isn't really orange. It's almost like yellowy orange. I don't know how to describe it. I'm not good with colors. But you know what I'm talking about. You see darting through a um, a dark shadow um, bits of greens, like mossy greens and uh, like dark, dark teal um, teals darting in and out of the, the reef itself. It's a rather large creature. You can see it come cutting through the reef, heading in your general direction. Would this be something that she's seen before or familiar with? Anyone? Uh, hmm. I would imagine, yes, you would recognize at least the, the general shape and outline uh, to be one of two things. Um, it could either be um, a like freshwater shark or a freshwater uh or yeah, like a freshwater shark that somebody has let into, because you do occasionally get the the weird people who are like, yeah, let's put a shark in the oasis, see what happens. Um, but it could be that, it could be a like crocodile, or it could be a, a hippocamp, which you would know to be a, um, a cross between, essentially a, a a literal seahorse. The top half is horse like, uh, the bottom half is mermaid like, um, in nature. Well, because she's not quite sure and um, she's a little bit nervous, she's going to start swimming um, in the uh, direction furthest from, say, a creature and um, as fast as she can, you know, because she's deep underwater, so she can't really warn Mm -hmm. Perrin, so she's going to try to just jet to try to get as close to the shore as possible and away from her. Okay, go out. Uh, your swim speed is what again? I believe. Is it 30 feet? It's equal to your movement, right? So you are able to start darting and swimming through the coral reef, following the cliff face to where it would meet the beach. Um, as you do, you maybe get about like right to the edge where the sand is starting to now go deeper uh, and where like people would normally like dive in and swim and kind of connect with the coral reef. When you do, in fact, coming out from the right, see that same shadow, you turn your head. And it isn't a shark. It thankfully is not a crocodile, but it is a hippocamp swimming in your direction. Not one, but three. It's one bigger one with two little ones kind of veering in your direction. Are they known for being aggressive, especially if they have little ones? Um, you would know that generally, I mean, every, every mother is protective of their child. Um, However, hippocamps are known where, if as long as you are kind of respectful and nice, uh, then they also kind of take that in stride as well. Okay, so um, she's going to slowly um, get out of water and kind of keep in, trying to keep her distance but not startling them, kind of like slowly backing up her um, web feet, kind of going in deep into the sand, trying to not make too much noise, but also trying to head kind of back where Perrin is, kind of headed in that direction. Alright. Um, as you're backing up, and like you're starting now to get into the shallower water where um, it's up to your, you know, your chest, and then your belly, and then your knees, um, you see one of the little ones kind of poke its head up out of the water and like dive in your general direction and then like hop up again, very much like dolphins kind of like in the shallows of at the beach where it's like looks like it's trying to play around um, but seeing that you don't seem very interested it kind of just 
hops back and starts swimming toward well, where I think, I Mama think if is. it's being cute and such, I think that she probably would have stopped. She probably mm-hmm. was just nervous and wanted to respect the mama and her mm-hmm. babies. But then if the baby is a little bit playful and being real cute, she'll probably take a moment and just watch. So it, it, for a moment it sits there and it plays around hops in you see like on the beach itself coming down from the beach you see a number of uh patrons to the different um the different resorts of the oasis starting to come down the beach seeing like these are hippo camps are aren't necessarily rare for the oasis given that it's a very um like it's a destination spot um they're kind of bred and it's since it's an enclosed lake within the island um they're kind of bred within there as well they're also they also kind of do like little like horse ride like water horse rides like they would do the dolphins at a normal resort um so there are some that are a little bit more uh domesticated these don't seem to be domesticated but people are coming down to kind of take a look at what's going on and as the two children now are starting to play at one point they like do the thing where they like charge at each other and butt heads and then they like shake it off um it reminds me of me and Perry when we were younger <laughs> um, they kind of look at you uh, before mom comes again in and kind of swoops now that the crowd behind you is getting a little bit bigger it's no more than a you know maybe a dozen or so but within that like you could tell mom's not really comfortable more humans are starting to show up she scoops around uh, the front of the two of them and they bo- they dive into the water and they start to head deeper into the um Oasis Lake. Be safe out there. She, even though she knows that they don't understand a word, she still says it. And um, she kind of um, nods to, like, if she saw some of the people just kind of, like, politely smiling, nodding, and um, to try to head and find her brother okay. where she left him. But kind of taking, at the same time, taking her time. Mm-hmm. She's still kind of just, like, taking a look around, um, just kind of, you know, seeing the resort off in the distance and, you know, the people who are just kind of maybe lounging about or walking on the beach mm-hmm. and um, kind of looking out into the ocean again and um, maybe like where um, hippocamps are kind of swimming off into the distance and kind of just being in that moment mm-hmm. and um, thinking about the fact that she may very much be going on this new journey with her brother and you know kind of she still has those questions about whether or not she's ready but she's trying to now just kind of focus on you know shaking that off a little bit and heading to find her as you take that one last look toward the pair of hippo camp or the trio of hippo camps making their way into or out into the distance you notice one thing in particular the sun Again, it's kind of at that weird angle that, like, that Perrin was talking to you about earlier, where it's hitting the lake and and connecting with the shoreline. The hippocamps are in this, almost like the two siblings, this winding and intertwining as they follow the mother um, toward the opposite side of the lagoon, almost right on the path of the sun. You turn around and you get a look at the oasis itself it's usually to you a beautiful sight to behold but in this moment and seeing these creatures these almost mythological creatures uh, you turn around and you look at the oasis and it just seems there's just like that slight bit of drab there it's not as there's it's not as poppy or as wow as as growing up in this area has led it to be Uh, and realizing that you take a minute kind of gather yourself uh, and start to head your way up the mountain toward Perrin Perrin at the top of the this this hill uh, this cliff um, you're sitting there strumming along uh, when From behind you, you hear the padding of paws. You 
just just roll <laughs> I wanted to see if that was role play or if you were actually like if you were if you were actually doing it or if it was if if it was just like you just giving me the nod of like yeah I turn around um, just being like just slowly turning looking over his shoulder quietly trying not to disturb whatever on this island is trying to kill him you uh, <laughs> you turn around and you see um, not some dangerous creature coming to at- assault you while you are in peaceful creative thinking but instead one of your um not necessarily newer longest friends but one of your friends that you've made that you've become like to the point where like you get like you you get into shit together with uh a tabaxi brown with these kind of dark or these darker black uh and browns that line his body um a couple of uh black in, or like really, really dark brown spots and black spots line him. You would know him as uh, Driftwood on the Crest, or Crest, uh, as his simple name, or a normal, just very, very human name would be. And he comes running up to you, and he's panting, and he's like, "Hey, I finally, finally found you." Where, where else would I be if I'm not I, I, at home? I, I mean, I. I figured uh, you would be, uh, well, if you weren't in bed, you would be playing and you weren't doing either of those. Uh, so I figured you would maybe be at the Lucky Sand Dollar, uh, be, but I went and I ran there and you weren't there playing. So uh, naturally, I came all the way back and found you here. All right, okay. Crest, what are you. What's going on? T- uh, tonight, uh, there's a big gig at, at the, the Sand Dollar. Uh, e- apparently, if we do a good enough job, we can make enough money to charter the boat to the mainland. Hey, keep it down. I, like... I am trying to make her believe that this is her idea, okay? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that you, you do the thinking. I just make sure the connections get through. Okay, yes, right. Um, how, how much are they paying? I, I think if, if, we can win, if we can win the pot, uh, well, it depends. Do you want the pot or do you want the... Um, do you, do you, do you want the, 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 the um, I, I forget what they call Battle of the Bards, something like that. Which one would you prefer? Right, uh... And you would know, for context, since, since that DM hasn't really told Perrin what the Lucky Sand Dollar right. is, but you would know that the Lucky Sand Dollar is one of the few places that you, like, frequent a lot. Um, mm-hmm. it is known for having kind of a illegal casino underground Mm. Um, where you have spent most of your time playing uh, and just kind of networking and getting to know people. Chris, I... You know how much I appreciate you and the rest of the band. But... Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to have to do this on my own. The Battle of the Bards um, is, is it's a bigger it's a bigger risk but it's a bigger bigger reward as well uh, so you're saying uh, that wait I don't I don't I don't I, he, you 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 breaking up the, the ban. I'm going to charter this boat. You can come with me if you want. However, I need to do this on my own. Crest doesn't normally get angry or even really that upset. Um, just like Driftwood 
on the tide he just kind of rolls you typically rolls with the punches but it's hard especially when this kind of money is on the line um for him not to be anything but and you can see furrowed brows his eyes get a little bit more um not dilated but like he, he just looks angry uh, well uh um best of luck to you then uh the boys and i will find a way to compete as a whole uh with or without you i guess you're going to do just fine you never needed me to begin with but like i said i need to do this and if you'd like to come with me it'd be fine and I I would like it all the same but tonight I, I don't know and he kind of like turns back to the water as she's frolicking out of it mm -hmm. and there's just something in that moment where he gets caught in the glisten of uh, the light on his sister he looks back at Crest there's just something that I need to take care of. I understand. Um, we will put up a good fight, as always. And he kind of just punches you on the shoulder. And I... Uh... I give him a little tip under the chin with my finger. You're going to be just fine. Just don't make sure you don't bash through your drum skins again, mm -hmm. or else you're going to be left with two and a half drums of which you can barely play it. No, noted. Good advice as always. Uh, this is why, of course, you are not only the lead singer, but the... Uh, the solo lutist. We all have our place, Christ. And you are the rhythm section. Keep them in line. I, I will do my best. And he kind of like nods respectfully and begins to head off. Uh, Finn, you, being observant, making your way up the hill, trying to catch up or get back to Perrin, spot probably about the back third of that conversation you're not 100 percent what sure what the argument is about you can tell very visibly that crest who you know pretty well by now um is it was visibly angry uh perrin being able to put his mind at ease somewhat um picking out the bits and pieces of the conversation um the one thing that in particular would have stood out to you is that whatever whatever perrin is doing he needs to do this and he needs to do it alone. As you're sitting there, Crest kind of turns with both of you and starts to walk back down the cliffside. Oh! Uh, um, Master, uh, or Miss Venara. Uh, how, how do you do? Nice to see you, Crest. Yeah. How are you doing today? Uh, it, um... It is sunny and bright, as they would say. Um, and I have all of my whiskers. Well, I'll take that as you're doing all right. <laughs> but are you really doing all right? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, I was just talking to uh, Perrin about um, the band coming to, to uh, the, the Hope Spring tonight uh, and potentially playing the dinner course. And he kind of he bows again and, and continues to head down onto the beach. Uh, at which point, as soon as he hits the sand, takes off at a full frickin' run, um, and and heads into into town. Yeah, she definitely catches the. <laughs> yeah, he's he's not making. Sure it. Yeah. 
Perry. Are you doing all right, Perry? I'm, uh, I'm fine. I, uh... Listen, there, before, before we head out, um, there's something I'd, I'd like to tell you. Um, tonight there's going to be, uh, a performance. Oh, I where, think Chris uh, mentioned it. And he just kind of like thinks about it for a second and then like knows for sure that Crest lied like for sure um and just and looked at her and she goes well um the the band is going to hopefully play the spring um the resort and I'm I'm going to compete musically um oh so that was what he meant by battle and like she, she like turns and she says that, and then she's like, "Oh, uh, uh. and and um, hopefully whatever money uh, I can garner through the performance this evening, um, we can use to set sail, like we were talking about. Boats, boats don't come free. Yeah, um, from what I heard, they're very expensive. So and." Not to mention, I mean, the crew and the captain and, and food and, and, and whatnot. Yeah, no, definitely. I understand. Um, you think you can win? I mean, I know you're, you're very, you're very talented. I, I can't do what you do and you sing beautifully. But, um, I mean, I, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of really talented acts. It's going to be tough. Right. Um, I'm confident that I will at least rise above uh, and become part of uh, the cream of the crop as it were and as as long as Elisa's not there I should be alright but cross my heart if she shows up I'm gonna have my ward cut out for me, but oh, he's still good. hung up about that, huh? It, it it's fine. It's not. It's fine. Just because she can hit the high A doesn't mean that I can't do an equally brilliant performance. Um, and you just kind of you can see that he's like growing pink in the face, and kind of flustered. Um, but tonight I need to be in the best frame of mind. And then I can get on stage, do my performance, and then we can set sail. Well, um, is there anything that I can do to help? I mean, maybe I can make you some of that special herbal tea so it really coats your throat so you can hit, um, I mean, I forgot what, uh, B? Is that a G? I don't really know. Anyway, you can right. hit those notes kind of like uh, Liza, yeah. I, I think that would be lovely. Um, the tea would be great. I would... Normally, I would not ask for you to come along just in case there were any, any unsavory people who may or may not want to... Anyways, um... Want the what, huh? They might want to talk to you in ways that they shouldn't be because they are not proper individuals and you are a proper lady um oh, uh, i mean i've heard people cussing i mean again aunt merlara when she gets four of those wines in her she starts cussing and talking crazy i mean not as much as uncle but you know no you're absolutely right but um if, if you wouldn't mind um coming mm -hmm. with me i um where is this taking place again uh, it's the lucky the lucky sand dollar um uh, we're gonna I'm have that to place I, I i know i know i know just don't don't let it go with mum or dad that that's where we're going and everything right. will be fine everything right. will be okay you just need to that area oh my god you you, oh. you just need to focus okay. Okay. and allow okay. yourself okay. to not let them read you you know what? Better yet, oh. let me do the talking. 
uh, okay well you, you you're really good and you have those fancy words and yeah like mama and daddy usually can't tell all of your time but mama usually kind of has a little inkling but she doesn't know as much as like it's kind of just written all over my face at least that's what you always tell me so right. yeah right. you're right yes. i'm just gonna try to stand back on this one and try to just is that good it, it, you, you straight, don't straight don't, face, right? Don't don't look. Okay. Um, what we're also going to do is we're going to grab um one of my bags. Um, okay, before we leave, because I've got um I've got my uh, I've got my kit that'll have all my um dressings, my makeup, and and performance things, so that we can um maybe look make you look like uh someone else. And, and and so you don't stick out in the crowd because anyone who sees your hair they're going to know you from a mile away um so we might have to like tuck it in and but i like my hair i never i'm, I'm not saying i'm not I'm, I'm not going to change the color of your hair what i'm going to okay. do is i'm going to make sure that no one can see it um oh okay all right let's let's head back home and then we'll figure out what we're doing tonight Wait, I get to wear one of those like fancy lace front things. If you really want, I will make yes. Yes, you can wear a lace front. Oh, that's so exciting. Okay, I let's go. I don't know what store you get those from, but they're really pretty. All right, cool. Uh, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry, Renee. You chose this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But two of you you could walk you could walk and talk this is this that's a walk and talk um mm -hmm. you made your way make your way back to Kalara's hope spring resort um your mom along with her retainer their retinue of that's the retinue is that the right word? i don't know group of chefs um are getting dinner prepared her leading the way uh your father greeting the guests that are coming down for the evening meal um you can see True to his word, um, Crest, as long, along with the rest of the members of your band, setting up on stage, um, preparing for an, a quick evening set. Um, everybody, your whole family, your uh, Grandpa L and your uh, Aunt Merlara, and I need to grab the last couple of them. Oh, there they are. Uh, your... Uncle, there's a lot. Your uncle Eldrin <laughs> and your grandma Meryl, and that's it. Uh, <laughs> just the like, two. It right, was the right, uncle. Right. The uncle I forgot the name of. I honestly forgot the name of the uncle, but that's mostly because y'all told me you didn't care about him. So <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's on. That's on you. Your uncle, um, unnamed. Yeah, unnamed. Un, unnamed uncle number one. Uh, no, but they're all, you know, all in, in their nice little, you guys have like a nice little section that you guys eat as a family and for that night, uh, with the guests, um, just an evening ritual that like your, your mom and dad both kind of agreed, um, was for a way for the Villars to show that everybody who comes within the fold of the Hope Spring Resort is a part of the Villar family. Um, uh, family is really important and as such, everybody is. Uh, so you guys all sit down, start eating your evening meal, um, uh, Crest and the rest of the band playing, and you kind of get, um, uh, Perrin, you start to see, uh, they transition songs, and the one thing that you and your band are really good at knowing is that when certain songs are played, it usually means something, and so when they dip from playing more of, like, the, um, uh, like dinner, like Frank Sinatra E style dinner music to the more like, you know, it's time to dance and, and party type of music. You know that as your sign to attempt to get out of the resort. Yeah, I have um, uh, my loot in one hand, my bag over my shoulder, uh, and I rush over to uh, Finn and I go, I, you gotta go, you gotta go now while, while no one's watching. Oh, okay, let me just grab my bag. She's like uh, her, putting stuff okay. in, like shoving what she can in there. All right, okay. Your, so. your, your mom and, and dad and your grandma and grandpa and uh, are, are dancing on, on the dance floor. You're at uh, Merlara is, is at this point 
almost passed out at the dinner table. Um, and you can see far off on the other side, um, just being his shady old self, um, your uncle just kind of brooding and, and looking out the window into into town. Uh, go ahead and give me stealth checks really quick. Just to see if... Thank you, Umbro Oculus Dice. <laughs> That's a 17. I would also like to say thank you to Umbro Oculus Dice for my 17. <laughs> um, and I'd like to say fuck you, Umbro Oculus Dice, for a 2 and a 4. Um, <laughs> so, which has pretty much been the standard <laughs> Umbro Oculus Die roll every time I roll against you guys. Um, so your mom and dad don't they're having too much fun they're laughing and um you can see Aaron True just swinging in your father Cassian's arms um as the band begins or continues to play you sneak out and head down the street ducking into an alley before coming to the back door um the hidden kind of back door of the sand dollar, the lucky sand dollar. All right, okay, so before we go in, um, for, uh, we're going to just take a look at you. Um, and he pulls over his disguise kit um, that he has. Um, and sure enough, he starts like rummaging through it. Um, and he pulls out um, what looks to be. Um, a long shawl and um he like starts like tucking back finn's hair and like turning it over in his hands um and then he he just takes one of her hands and says hold this and he like puts his hand on her hair so she can hold the like bundle and he starts like wrapping it around um in kind of a um like a, a headscarf um from like uh, like a middle east sort of rap um and i was like okay and he goes okay right um that looks fine okay so you're tucked back your hair's fine um oh right and he pulls out um a black lace veil um that he like gently like sets across her forehead so it drapes like just just over her nose so that um her lips are, are are visible but like her eyes uh and nose are um just are we slightly... going to a burial why is everything no. black <laughs> it's it's so that you don't stand out we we want you be because oh, okay. you're you're right. you're you're technically too young to be here but and we need and a half That's and, not old and enough? they require you to be 21 um so oh, we need to make right, you look right, right, right. We, we need to okay. make you look a little older and and we need to make you look not like you at all so okay. right and he just kind of like stands back and like looks her over and she does like this weird like her version of like trying to look older where she purses her lips she, yep but it's just like you can only see the lips you can't see <laughs> right uh okay perfect um just Follow me and remember, mm -hmm. let me do the talking. All right. Lips okay. sealed. Okay. All right. I got it. I got it. He like takes a deep breath and then like in it, in his mind he goes, as long as she doesn't trip, we'll be fine. And he just like walks to the back door of the silver dollar and almost does... immediately she, you can hear her where she's like, Ugh! and she like literally trips over her feet, but like she catches herself because she's like wearing a like i think it was like a, you gave me a cloak it was a black cloak right that basically like yeah she her her web feet somehow got kind of tangled up at the bottom but she tries to like hike it up so then she doesn't have that same issue okay 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 okay, okay. uh so perrin knocks on the back door in the way that he knows it's important to knock on mm -hmm. And the door slides open. You see a pair of eyes, just just eyes, uh, look through, and just a grunt. Hmm. Door slides, 
opens back up to reveal behind it a uh, bugbear. Master Heron, welcome back. I mean, hello. Bows and and does the like enter. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, and he just kind of like pushes uh, beyond Steve the bugbear. And he goes, um, it's all right if I bring um, my muse with me. I mean, you know, we don't ask questions here. Thank you. And he just kind of like waves uh, her to follow him, and then they he like heads down the stairs. And you see her do like this like weird deep bow that was totally unnecessary as she like goes inside following her brother and then she tries to like pick up pace because she she took so long doing that she forgot that she wasn't following anymore before you start to head down he puts his hand out in front of you really quick which like compared like it's like the size of your face uh and he, be respectful don't touch anything that doesn't belong to you do you understand the rules Parent, parent to you, to you, to you, Finn. And she's like frantically shaking her head, like up and down, and then she kind of like looks at, like down over at Perrin, and, and then and like back to the person. Perrin, Perrin looks at Steve and goes, I, "The poor lass was born without a tongue, but she is such a radiant beauty." From what I've heard down there, you could do the talking for the two of you. And he lifts his hand and two of you are free to go downstairs where you see not only a plethora of tables um Perrin you would recognize three dragon Ante, you'd also see um the giant's tower um you'd see um be uh, beholder's eye and then uh the last one that you'd see that is uh kind of familiar is um goblin toes Goblin toes, you know to stay away from because it requires actual goblin toes. Um, the other ones are more metaphorical. That one is pretty, pretty, yeah. Uh, he like waves Fenar to like bend over um, and like talk to him real close. Don't, don't, don't look at any of the games. Don't look at anyone playing the games. Just stay behind me. Everything will be okay. I think I'm gonna stop doing that, um, that adult face, uh, cause my, my, now my cheeks hurt, my jaw hurts. Uh, and, and to be honest, it looks like you're about to take a poop. Oh, okay. Noted. Pulling a grandpa out. Mm. All right, um, I need to, and he looks around and sees the, uh, the manager or the, the person running the place, um, mm -hmm. and he goes, uh, all you need to go over there. Come with me. And he goes up to the bar where the individual running the whole place is uh, and he just kind of like looks up at the bar. Alright. I heard there's a bit of a battle going on this evening. And you'd see um, the dwarf known as uh, Litz. Uh, who who is the main proprietor of the Lucky Sand Dollar, uh, and he also kind of runs pretty much everything that it would be considered illegal falls under his purview. Um, he turns around and uh, yes, there's um, there's going to be a couple of entries. Oh, no band tonight. I see. No. We're huh. going solo this evening. We're going to try and win it all. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Well, uh, the buy-in currently is uh, 10 gold pieces. The winner makes that pot plus a 10% uh, share of any bets placed during the course of the event. As per usual. Great. Um, Perrin pulls out uh, what Fenaro would recognize as his entire life savings of 15 gold uh, and puts 10 on the table um, and he goes, alright um, I'm, I'm in for the battle um, and if there's any 
bets going on, um, let me know. And I might increase my share. Hmm. Um, right now, there's there's no there's everybody's pretty. There's there's no underdog yet. I'll say that you, even compared to some of the others, bring a pretty good fight as always. I mean, technically, I'm always the underdog because I'm technically always under the dog. If um, if you wanted steak in Giant Sour, takes out two more gold and puts it on the table on the counter. Yep, I think uh, yeah, I think I think that I would. Which uh, which type of giant? Always bet on storm. All right, and he takes your two gold, and he pulls out a quick ledger and notes down that you have two on storm, um, before pocketing it, po- or like putting it into a purse. Uh, not pocketing it, because what kind of proprietor would he be? Um, no, putting it into a purse, and then um, saying, "All right, well, uh, you have about handful of minutes before the first performers go on you'll be on and he looks at a quick list uh, fourth um, just be ready fourth mm, that's my favorite number thank you um, my dear um, if you wouldn't mind following me he says to Finn um, and then I, he's going to head towards where the stage is and Finn is going to um, appear to follow, but she's going to go up to the individual that um, Perrin was talking to, and she's going to um, reach into um, her like little side bag, and she's going to basically, if Perrin is watching, going to um, have out a bag full of coins, which he knows is her coin purse. <laughs> And uh, she's going to go, <clears throat> I'm bending down the little one right there. And pointing over at Karen. I see. Um, and he pulls he pulls out his ledger again. Like, he's, like, staring at his ledger while he's doing this. How many gold pieces and um, your name? Great, great. Sally Sue, got it. Shally, Shally, sorry, Shally Shoe, Shally Shoe, got it. That's H U at the end of it. Now that's a D and D name. I'll give, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. That's a D and D name right there. Shally Shoe with the H E at the end. Um, oh God! All right, cool. He takes your money. Um, is oh, extremely God. perplexed and you just the, uh, he, he just kind of looks at you as you're standing there now and he's just, any any other bets that you'd like to make nope all right well uh feel free peruse the uh, uh sand dollar and when you know, if you win uh, one of my uh, employees will bring you your earnings. One more thing, Sonny. Uh, stop taking those gobbles' toes. They need them for walking, too. And then she's just going to, like, swiftly turn and start walking. <laughs> and, and, like, uh, it's like an awkward walk. Like, she's trying to, like, switch, like, but it's just, like... Make it, like, de- make it, make it, make a deception check. <laughs> just at, just, we're past the point now. We're past the point. Uh, 
do we have any more of those rolls? You guys, you guys have a d20 and a d4 still. And technically, you can use the d20 and then use the d4, or use the d4 and then choose to use the d20 instead. Okay, um... Let's see what we get. No, it, it's so bad. My roll is so bad. I'm going to have to use the d20 for this. Take it. One. Take it, please. Take it, please. <laughs> what is that? All right. The d20 is a 14. Yes. Thank God, because I had a three. All right. <laughs> Which is pretty. It's on brand for Fanara. For, for fans, sure. let's face it. All right. Sure. So. As you turn around and shuffle a little bit, like you feel the veil starting to fall as you're talking about the goblin toes, and you quickly pull it up and cover your face as you turn around and go. Feeling pretty successful in your first endeavor to try to uh, talk your way through a, a situation like your big brother normally does. Um, he, he, you kind of turn around and you look at him again at one point, and like you still kind of, he's not eyeing you, but like he, he's. He's in your general vic- like in your general vicinity, but like can't tell if he's eyeing you or just like just generally zoning out or just so perplexed that he's given up looking at anything else. Um, but you feel pretty accomplished. She does what uh, is her her version of a thumbs up, and he knows what that means. And then she like quickly puts her arm down stiffly. And goes back to her little wall. The first act comes up shortly after you kind of get over to the main stage. Um, I'm going to do something a little different here. Um, A tiefling walks up with a violin. uh, And he says, uh, my name is Zane Naval. uh, Here to... um, well, here to, for this. And, and he bows respectfully and starts to play. Fenara, roll d d20 for me. Alright. Alright. 14. 14. Alright. Noted. He plays a very slow but beautiful, like, just melody. It, it's almost like a trance and puts everybody, everybody's just standing there, a couple of them on the edge of their seat, like, start to sit up and just watch. Um, no singing, just the sound of the violin. And it's almost as if about halfway through that a second and then a third violin start playing in the background. But it's just him. And then at the end, he stops. He bows. Everybody starts clapping. And he turns and he walks off the stage. The second, a dwarf walks up to the stage pulls out looks to be a small like little like almost like pipe size and he presses a button and it drops it to the ground and as he drops it to the ground it turns into a giant alphorn and he walks to the end and he says my name is Darius ah and uh, I am here to uh, play you a song. And he walks to the back of the Alphorn, and he plays this loud blast, uh, and I will roll this one. And after the blast, I'm not going to sing, but he sings... A song that starts very much like you and me and then continues into the rest of the song ending with I only want to be with you and the crowd again applause and roaring the third a small Gnome walks up, and this is gnomes are are uncommon but common in in the aisles. They like gnome. You definitely would assume that this is somebody who has traveled here specifically to play at the like in the oasis itself and, and to make their fame here. 
uh, as opposed to in other places of the world. And, uh, my name is Tibby, and uh, I uh, have been playing music for a very long time, hoping uh, to one day uh, potentially make it to the great court of uh, the emperor. Uh, long may he reign. And at that, immediately starts getting pelted with, like, ale horns and tomatoes as everybody's like, fuck the empire! And, like, freedom to the isles! And shit like that. And doesn't even make it a whole, like, two seconds into her song before just the booing and the rabble-rousing completely throws her off, and she just walks, just doesn't even acknowledge, walks off the stage. Parent. That's a sh that is an absolute shame. Right, uh, I, oh boy. You hate to see it, folks, you really do. You really hate to see it. <sighs> um, thank you, uh, everyone for coming out this evening um also uh another fuck the empire thank you very much uh we we don't no not in these parts thank you very much if you want to talk about this interim you're just you're gonna head north until your sails give out okay uh but that you hear like another yeah, like a couple clinking of drinks in the back and yeah cheap pop play for the cheap pops um Right. Um, normally, I would play a raucous tune for you all that would set this place ablaze, get you all out of your seats. But today, I, I come to make you think of yourselves. He looks at Venara. Of other people. Perhaps maybe someone you know. This story is about a girl trying to become a woman. You will play the song that she inspired him to sing. And right while sitting As he sings this song, his heart breaks a little bit. As he knows just a little bit that there was a little bit of false pretense. strums his final chord, he looks out to the crowd and says, it's up to you to know how far you'll go. He turns on his heel and walks off the stage. When Fenara um, hears that last bit of what he said, how far you go, Basically, what Perrin would have seen is that there were already, like, 
tears that were dripping down so it's just basically like because she still has this veil that he put over her but it's just tears that were running down her face and it almost like instinctively when he turns on his heels she's like clapping like really loudly in her place that was beautiful And so she's like literally making all of these weird crying noises after she had totally done a different voice with the other person. And she's kind of just losing it. And then she turns to the person next to her. And it's like, and it's a, so beautiful, wasn't it? Steve is standing oh. next to you. <laughs> it was the most beautiful song in my yeah. whole life. This is a fucking bear ball. How can that talent just come out of someone so you know, small? You, you know, I think it finally got to me. I'm going to stop being a doorman. Hey, you don't have to be a doorman. You can be whatever you want to be. I didn't understand half of that, I but it's okay. That. And he gives you, like, he goes to give you, like, a, a hug. <laughs> And, like, she returns the hug for this random person that she's bonding with. Just the, both of them cry. The giant, like, Chewbacca bugbear. Like, just love yeah. him. And he gives give him some scrunches. And uh, yeah, time goes by. Person. The room is in a typical parent uproar after that. There are people crying. There are people hugging. If there were cell phones, there'd be people calling their moms and dads. Um... All of the emotions on the table. The Empire guys are like, the guys who are saying fuck the Empire were like, man, this war is pointless while they're like crying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the back, uh, I'm not going to make you roll because like, just just fuck you, man, for being beautiful. Uh, <laughs> it, it won't last long. Get it out now. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. Sure, um, check, checks out the wazoo <laughs> after this one. Oh Lord. Um, but... You manage between um, the two of you. Litz comes back up later, and uh, or one of his employees does, um, and brings Perrin, brings you a small bag containing uh, roughly 300 gold pieces, uh, which should be a decent amount to get you what you need, or what the two of you are seeking. Uh, Finn the another employee walks up to you and hands you a bag uh you put down all 15 correct mm -hmm. so you would win your 15 back plus an additional 50. and she kind of thank you thank you person uh, he, he takes it you're you're, wel you're welcome miss uh retreats and kind of goes back behind the bar and starts making drinks um, the night goes on the two of you celebrating your victory uh, people buying you parent drinks um, a couple offer Finn some I'm leaving that open in the air whether or not parent does anything or Finn drinks he's, or... he's watching very carefully as to well, who buys what. She's also, too, like, when people are trying to offer, she's looking over at Perrin, like, like, yay or nay. Like, so she's kind of just awkwardly he, tilting her head yeah. and, like, he, looking he at the person. Most, mostly shrugging, and then, like, when he, unless he sees somebody, like, specifically who would come off as bad, uh, then he would, like, just, like, gently shake his head whenever there was somebody that mm -hmm. she shouldn't be taking a drink from. Um, but most people in here after something like that, um, there is, there is very little ill intent because of Lit's very specific mm -hmm. rules for the lucky sand dollar. However, there are times and like the one time you do shake your head. No, you watch as Lit's kind of makes eye contact, like he's watching you and makes eye contact with you for a second. And then Steve just manifests behind that person and very casually escorts them out of the lucky sand dollar um, but generally drinks are bought um, 
I don't know if Finn likes ale, but it's a lot of ale. Maybe some yeah, like some. She didn't realize that it was at the time that she was accepting ale. She thought it was like or like meat or whatever. She thought it was just mm-hmm. like some fruity juice, and she's never drunk anything before. Oh yeah, this is an island drink. resort. They wouldn't have ale. What the hell am I talking about, oh, DM? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's mead, but then like also they have like pina coladas and like yeah. daiquiris yeah. It's, and like it's, all of it's the fun meat stuff. And rum and yeah, so, it's like, mead and rum. During, yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's basically yeah. She, no. so all she knows. What am I she talking doesn't about? really because she hasn't really been to like she would follow him but usually he would be like you need to go home you can't come in here like like not this place but like just other places that she would try to follow uh perrin so she hasn't had any like she's not allowed to drink at home so she's just basically downing these drinks because she's like these are really tasty but she's got kind of whispering it to herself but also too now there's like Lit. Yeah. Two of people. You. And she's starting to lose her, like, sunny. And now she's just turning, just where now it's Finn's, like, Finn is just talking mm-hmm. to people. Perrin. Wow, have you always had horns like that? That's really cool. I... You have, like, five. Wow, that's just really cool. And where are you from? I am, and this is Zane, who you'd recognize as Zane. Uh, I am originally from uh, Brahaus in Cantor. Wow. Yes. What language do you speak? Uh, I speak, uh, well, I mean, uh, if you want to get technical, I know Inferno. I also know Cantori. Um, wow. Those seem like interesting languages. I have been practicing how to speak I, I things can, different I can tell. different yes. languages you know mm-hmm. because you, ne- you never know when you might run across different people from different places and you know not everybody speaks the same way you may speak so you do you just gotta <laughs> learn other things and, and broaden your <laughs> <language>. <laughs> Inferno. I want to learn how to speak in front. Parent at this moment is like, just like, tucks himself right in front of of Finn and goes, Zane, I am, I would like to thank you for your patience um, with my lovely, lovely muse here. Um, she appears to have. Oh yes, yeah. to- my name is Muse Shelly Shoe. Yes, Muse Shalishu. Um, right, uh, Zane, thank you so much uh, for uh, in- entertaining my guest. Uh, and and I would like to thank you for your patience. And you have made a lovely performance with your violin. I'd like to, I'd love to be able to learn how you managed to make the sounds like you did, but I don't think I, I think I'll be here for much longer. Uh, if. And, and first off, you as well, uh, Perrin. Uh, it was a very moving song, you, you sang. Uh, rem- reminded me that I, I, I must get home. I spent too much time here on vacation. Um, and he, he doesn't give you his card, but he essentially gives you the information of kind of how to get to Brow, like generally how to get to Brow House. And then uh, if you are ever in town, seek out House Nival. Right, House Naval. I, yes. I'll remember that. And he like reaches out to give him a, uh, a gladiator handshake. And he responds in kind. Good evening. And then Finn tries to do the same, but she kind of like awkwardly like ends up like slapping Perrin in the uh, face. Oh, I think. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Pleasure meeting you. You very nice person. I, I promised to learn the language. If if you come with a uh, parent to Brahas, uh, then I will get one of my father's tutors to uh, teach you Inferno, personally. And then she kind of lifts up part of her uh, veil. <laughs> I just want her to go away, guys. <laughs> 
Bye. <laughs> He immediately, he immediately looks at Perrin and he's like, he gives you the, you know the rules, dude, yeah, look. No, and, <laughs> and, and, and he's just like, like, right, got it. And I'm like, all right, um, use Shalishu, we are going to get back home. Let's okay, get out of here. Okay, right. Sonny, let's go. <laughs> And everybody kind of turns. Now, after hearing Finn's normal voice, to hearing this one, they kind of give you a look. Nobody yeah. thinking anything of it at this point, though. You head back to Valar's Hope Spring Resort. Um, there you get very much the mom turns on the light in the dark corner as you're walking no. in. <laughs> um and just just to speed no things, just no stealth okay. check. Listen, right, you can savage. never you can never stealth pa ch pa or stealth check <laughs> past the mob when she. Yeah. What was I thinking? Yeah. What was I thinking? Um, so you, what ends up happening over the next several days, um, and just to expedite this because we could play out every scene, but we it, it's already ten forty five. We know how this could go. Uh, we'd end up playing until midnight. Uh, you sit down. Aaron Trude and Cassian realizing that their children, uh, one, are extremely hammered and can't have an adult conversation <laughs> at like 1 or 2 p.m. at it, when they're just completely blitzed. They let you sleep in. Um, Mom brings you your her favorite hangover cures. Cassian is just sitting there holding back uh, Finn's hair as she's kind of, you know, probably needed a good yak yeah. um, at some point. Um, but in the morning and the days that follow, the four of you have a series of chats um, about the decision that the two of you are about to make and the journey you're about to embark on. Um, using the money and your father's know-how, uh, he and, con and some of his contacts, you procure passage on a ship to Cantor. Um, the only piece of advice or the only piece of information that other than like just kind of they're very stoic about it they don't really mask their emotions or they mask their emotions fairly well the, the main piece of uh, advice that you two get from your father is a uh, contact that he has in Shymore where the ship is heading uh, or not Shymore sorry Swaygut where the ship is heading um, to look for a individual named Umber. Umber. And Umber will be the one that can, uh, through connections, provide you with what you need once you're there. Okay. Is there anything before we end the session that either one of you would like to do? I would um, <clears throat> I would take uh, six gold out of everything we have and I would uh, the day bef the, like the day before we leave I'm going to find um, driftwood on the crests windowsill I'm going to leave him a small pouch of six gold with a small note that says, you are worth more than the gold you hold in your pockets. You will always shine brighter than every star in the sky. Um, she would have spent time um, making um, kind of like little small gifts, but um, using her knowledge, you know, with her herbalism kit and the things that she's learned while um, working at the lagoon, the spa um, and wellness um, little center that they have there. Um, she's going to um, basically blend together um, a special um, tea like a calming tea for her her mother 
because she knows that she often gets stressed sometimes and she needs something to kind of relax after having a, a busy day, um, especially on her feet, um, cooking a lot. Um, she's going to um, try to give her father um, a tonic to basically, um, you know, kind of it's one for like energy to kind of, you know, to get him to be a little bit more peppy because he's often known as being very drab and just kind of, you know, more introverted than obviously their mother. So it's something that kind of like will kind of perk him up a bit. Um, she um, makes um, the grandparents the same, um, the same kind of uh, tonics which is basically just for overall, it has different um, special things inside that will help them as far as vitality. And, you know, with, um, you know, staying as youthful as possible, <laughs> considering like, so like the version of like a, a version of like collagen kind of, you know, water-ish, that kind of thing to kind of keep them refreshed and, you know. Um, and then for um, the aunt, definitely her uh even though she really needed it the night that they went to <laughs> the battle of the bards um making her a hangover uh hangover uh tea a special tea uh, that she could brew to kind of help her uh, when she's feeling it and um there's nothing for the uncle because she doesn't like him uncle who uh, yeah. uh awesome you Take with your mother and father a cart ride to Ishtani, a place, Perrin, where you haven't been in a long time, a place you haven't been where the best memories that you have there, arguably, are of your mother meeting Cassian, and the worst being the day your father left for the sea. You go to the docks, you begin to board the boat, or get ready to board the boat, and Cassian places a hand on your shoulder, Finn, and just whispers very softly, squeezing your shoulder as he does. The road behind Avandra, or, I'm sorry, Logan messed up, he had it in his head. The road ahead, Avandra behind. Follow the path. Thank you. I'll remember that, Daddy. And he gives you both little hugs. Perrin gives you your nod. I I, <laughs> I will never know what what the hell that means, Dad. Like, okay, mm, mm -hmm. Give him uh, a break, Perrin. And the, oh, and the two of you board your boat. The swig hat and eventually find your way to Le Imiter, the home of Umber. The shittiest, stankiest, salt watery, smelliest tavern in all of Cantor, where we will begin our adventure in two fucking weeks. Woo! Thank you guys for hanging out. Sorry, it went so late. I did not anticipate it for going this long. But um, thank you all for, for those of you who stuck with us. Um, the first official episode of The Equium Expeditions featuring the two of these amazing human beings along with um, Eddie and Taryn and also this guy named Ronan. Um <laughs> I gotta get. I'm sorry. I gotta get the dicks in. I gotta get the dicks in while I can. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Ronan. You're watching this on VOD. I oh apologize. Um, we'll begin on September 14th at 8 p.m. Oh, I almost said Pacific Eastern Standard Time. And uh, yeah. Until next time, guys. Happy adventures. Stay safe. Uh, and we'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. I'm back now. You here? <laughs> <laughs>